check, check. All right, how's everybody doing? Everybody fine? Peachy? Oh man, it took a little longer to set up today than other times. I'm, I'm so f distracted. Oh man, so many things, so many things. What? I got this baby right here for y'all. The motherfucking, look at this sexy beast. Look at that. Shit, my goodness. The Fujifilm XF 10 to 24 F4 OIS LM. W R. This is Fujifilm's ultra wide lens, and it's quite a mouthful to say. Let's get started. Hey guys, what's good? It is me, I am Tung, and today we're going to talk about this lens right here, the 10 to 24 millimeter F4 OIS LM. WR. So this is the updated version. I picked this lens up like a few months ago. I started playing around with it for like a month, but I've I've shot with the original 10 to 24 millimeter f4 before. I'm just going to mesh the two experiences together because the optics are the same in the, the new version, so nothing's going to change on that. It's just the functionalities of the two lenses that are different. So what is different from this lens versus the original? So again, the lens optics are the same as the original 10 to 24. From what I've gathered and from what I'm shooting, I don't see any significant difference. What's different from this lens compared to the originals, again, are the functionalities. First off, this camera now has the WR badge, meaning that this lens is finally weather resistant. This is great news for all you landscape shooters out there. Now you guys can suffer outside in the wet and rainy snow and know that this lens will be fine. Another thing that is updated from the original lens is the aperture ring. So it has the same marking as the newer lenses out there, such as the 33 millimeter f1.4, the 18 millimeter f1.4, and I believe the new, the new 23 millimeter f1.4. The Mark 1 version didn't have markings. And um, when you rotate the aperture, it keeps spinning so there's like no hard stops on it and when i used to have that lens i did find that annoying when you have multiple lenses from fujifilm and they all have markings and hard stop that one just felt really out of place and my muscle memory didn't like it so i'm glad to see that fujifilm fixed it for this iteration generally speaking it's been a pleasant experience i do have some gripes with this lens but we'll save that for later but i would say that this lens does offer me a unique perspective especially at its widest focal length at 10 millimeter i got some unique looking shots and i had fun doing it I took some interior shots with this. Uh, I did a few time lapses around the city. I shot a few real estate properties. I shot portraits with it. Took this around again as my everyday lens to see what it has to offer. I would say the image quality isn't as sharp as some of my prime lenses. I did find that it does get soft around the edges. And I noticed this when I was pixel peeping. And I know I told you guys many times that I'm not a pixel peeper, but I do have a baseline when it comes to what my photos should look like in terms of uh, sharpness. Coming from someone that uses only prime lenses, prime lenses are, are generally sharper than zoom, le zoom lenses. I use the 33 millimeter F1.4 and it's been the lens that I keep going back to when I shoot portraits. That thing is like so sharp. Everywhere I look, I feel it retains its detail and it doesn't break down like the 10 to 24. It does get really sharp once you stop it down. As a portrait photographer, it doesn't bother me as much, but it does get soft around the edges. And I feel this lens does get sharp in the center, especially at 10 millimeters. It's sharp like any other Fuji lens right in the center. But when you zoom into like 24 millimeter, the center sharpness does soften up just a little. Zoom lenses aren't as sharp as prime lenses. So if you guys are coming from, you know, the Fuji Cron lenses, the F2 lenses, the F14 lenses, this may not seem as sharp to you. If you're a vlogger and you're using a Fuji film camera, this is the best lens uh, because of its wide focal length. It's going to be able to show your scene a lot better. You're going to get a lot of wobble effects in the corner, so just be careful. You need to hold your cameras really still. If you're someone that films real estate, I think this lens is great depending on the amount of light you have in that property. There were times where I struggled to get light 
resulting me to bump my ISO. But what real estate shooters are going to love about this lens is that the barrel of this lens does not extend. Everything is internal, so putting this on a gimbal won't give you any problems. You don't need to rebalance the gimbal if you're shooting at different focal lengths. And combine this lens OIS with the gimbal, you're gonna get some steady footage, which is a great combo. And I've used this lens probably a few times to do some talking heads for YouTube content before I got my Sony, and it was fine. This is where the F4 does really have limitations because of the way i'm set up right now i don't have much room to set up a studio light that could be powerful enough to have me lit at f4 all i use are these small led light sticks to light up my setup it was just better for me to get a lens that was a bit faster something like an f28 or an f14 that had better light gathering capability. And considering that this lens is an F4 lens, this will probably turn people away. If you're looking to shoot astrophotography, you are better off getting that eight to eight to 16 millimeter F2.8 for the light gathering capabilities. But you're also going to have to pay like a thousand dollars more for that eight to 16. And it also doesn't come with OIS. Something to think about. Again, like I said, I've used this lens a few times for real estate work. When I was shooting video, I had to crank up that ISO and that obviously hurt the image quality a bit. But I think I was around ISO 3200 to 4000 sometimes. It all depends on the light. So just keep that in mind when you're shooting with this lens. I shot portrait with this lens and it was interesting to say the least. I don't know how I feel about it just yet, but from the shots I did get, I kind of enjoyed it. It was hard for me to use this lens for portraits because I never shot anything this wide, especially for portraits. It's not something that you do, right? This lens is more for the architecture shots, the landscape shots, the interior shots, where you can take advantage of that wide focal length and show off that space, right? I try to do what fashion portrait photographers do, and I try taking wide, unique portrait shots. I did share this image in a Fujifilm Facebook group a few days ago, and a lot of you guys enjoyed this shot, which is great. But when I was out on this shoot using this lens, I wasn't excited about the shots I got, but that's probably because of my lens preferences. When I shoot portraits, I like the 50 millimeter full frame look. So I actually thought that this lens was just too wide for portraits. But again, it does offer a unique look that I find not the conventional portrait photographer would dare try to take a stab at. If you ever saw those high-end fashion magazines, it's always models posing with unique looking angles. It makes the model look taller and I find that this lens does a great job doing that. And once you get away from the center, you're, go you're obviously going to see some distortions. Your hands will look slimmer and longer and your head will look a bit funky. Legs can look very elongated. Unique like that. That's what I mean by unique. Like still cool, still trippy. I dig it. Another thing that I like is the minimum focusing distance at 10 millimeter is one of the reasons why you get a unique looking shot. You can put something like these shoes in the foreground and try to photograph the rest of the scene like the model right here like like what I try to do for an everyday lens I find this lens to be quite enjoyable I really like the ultra wide focal length the autofocusing was quick and snappy for my everyday walk around lens if you guys enjoy the original 10 to 24 millimeter focus autofocusing rest assured that this lens is the same when it comes to autofocusing maybe just a smidge faster when it comes to like landscape urban landscapes street stuff I'm, I am quite happy using this lens. When I was using this lens on a portrait shoot, I had face tracking on and I couldn't trust it. Again, I don't know if this is the lens fault or the camera's fault. I really don't trust Fujifilm's face tracking one bit and I'm just hoping that changes with the new Fujifilm X-H2 rumored to be announced next month. I hope they can fix that uh, face tracking, that eye tracking issue. It's totally unreliable. So I just remember seeing a box going around the model's face when I was out shooting, right? but I remember taking all those photos with the box around her face. But then when I came home to review my images, I find that her face wasn't the main focus, but it was her shirt. Something like this bothers me a lot. And being that I shoot portraits, the thing you want in focus is the eyes. 
but since this is an ultra wide angle i was okay with the face being in focus but it didn't really do that either so just know that this is coming from my experience i was using continuous auto focusing with face tracking on and i didn't find it that good for that situation so if you guys want to shoot portraits with this lens i just re recommend turning off the face tracking and just use single point auto focusing overall this lens is one of those lenses that offer a different perspective than what i'm used to i enjoyed it a lot it gets me thinking very creatively when i was out there shooting portraits with it as you can tell by uh, the shots that i took with this lens i tried to make it look different i had fun thinking creatively i had fun um you know getting my creative juices flowing and that's one thing that i do like when i go out and shoot with a brand new lens i always try to you know come up with ways to make it look good and that's that's more fun to me than trying to get a good shot when it comes to um when it comes to photography i am more excited about the process than i am getting the shot i definitely enjoy this lens probably going to keep it around and try to shoot some more time lapses with it having a zoom range from 10 to 24 is really great it's versatile in my opinion it's small and it's lightweight and it has optical image stabilization and it's also weather resistant all that for a price of thousand dollars us the f4 is going to bother some people but the next best option is like the eight to 16 millimeter f2.8 and that's going to cost you another thousand dollars which is really pricey and you know i rather not i don't know about you guys uh and it's bigger and it's heavier and it doesn't have a filtered thread so what are your thoughts on the fujifilm xf 10 to 24 f4 ois wrlm what do you shoot with it is it landscape mostly travel stuff portraits do I have anybody shooting portraits with this lens? Let me know your thoughts below. And if I missed something in this review, make sure to comment them down below. I would just love to hear your thoughts and just kick it with y'all in the comments sections. While you're there, just make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video. It does help the channel out. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's where you're going to see more of my work at I am Tung. And that is it for me, guys. Once again, my name is Tung and I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Okay, bye. Ooh, mama.